When a student's rights are wronged, this is my case study for EDL 853. Section 1, summarize the case. First, we must understand the background information, what has and is happening, who is involved, and what the problem is. Background information. Nottingham High School is in the Dover School District. It has approximately 3,200 students. The campus was built in the 1950s. Um, it has relocatable trailers in order to add a little bit of space. Major construction took place um, to bring the building up to code, but about 25% of it is still not up to code in regards to accommodating students with disabilities. Dr. Harvey is the superintendent of Do Dover Public Schools. He has a great relationship with staff in all of the school buildings. This district is known for excellent programs. The administration, staff, and parent volunteers work hard to ensure that academic programs are exceptional. There are six elementaries, two middle school, and one high school, so Nottingham High School in the district. The community is extremely supportive. Everyone rallies around the high school and attends the Friday night football games. So what has or is happening? Miguel Hernandez um, and his family moved into the Dover School District because the state directory identified Dover as having outstanding um, academics and football. The family moved into the district. Miguel is a sophomore and he is the varsity quarterback. He's hardworking, he's very motivated, um, he works well with his team and is encouraging to them. He was excited for the football game on Friday night. He was injured in the game towards the end of the fourth quarter. Um, he was taken to the hospital on a stretcher and they found out he had a spinal injury and that he was paralyzed from the waist down. His family and friends were extremely supportive um, during this process. They helped keep his spirits high um, and he was able to keep up on his studies throughout this process. When he was ready to return to school, Mr. and Mrs. Hernandez, his mom and dad, met with Ms. Guzman, the school counselor. Um, she said that we were ready for him when he was ready to come back. We just needed a physician to sign off um, on his return to school. They let her know that he would be using a wheelchair, but no other accommodations or modifications would be needed. About two weeks later, Miguel returned to school, and when he came back, we had a welcome back assembly for him, um, just kind of in his honor. He goes to his first period, period class, and he's called out to meet with Miss Guzman. She gives him an alternative schedule. Her, his third period biology was switched to a different science course because the biology room is not wheelchair accessible. This class still meets graduation requirements, but it's not a college prep class. Miguel goes home and he tells his parents what has happened. So the next morning, Mrs. Hernandez calls um, and requests a meeting with me, the principal. My administrative assistant told me she seemed very upset and she was able to get Mrs. Hernandez in um, for an appointment that afternoon. When she got to the meeting, she wanted to know why her son's schedule was changed without her or her husband's knowledge. She demanded that Miguel be put back into the biology course because it was necessary for the university he wanted to attend. Um, during this meeting towards the end, Mr. Hernandez arrived with Howard Carey, their lawyer. Mr. Carey asked me if I was familiar with Section 504 of the Rehabilitation Act of 1973 and FAPE. This brings me to Section 2, Legal and Ethical Issues. Miguel and his educational rights are being harmed by the actions of others. First of all, Section 504 of the Rehabilitation Act of 1973 prohibits discrimination in a public school on the basis of a disability. The school is not in compliance. Miguel is being discriminated against by not having classrooms that are, that are accessible to all students, including him. The Individuals with Disabilities Education Act, IDEA, ensures all students receive a free, appropriate public education, FAPE. The school is, again, not in compliance. Miguel's education is no longer appropriate because for the school's convenience, he was removed from biology, a course that he needs and would like to take. Third, the Americans with Disabilities Act, ADA, specifically Title II, states that schools or government agencies cannot discriminate against individuals because of a disability. Again, the school is not in compliance. Miguel is being discriminated against by not allowing him access to the biology classroom. Additionally, the school is acting unethically because we're not providing for all of our students. My synthesis sentence is, Miguel, Miguel Hernandez's rights are being violated by not providing him with a FAPE and Nottingham High School not being up to state and federal 
codes in regards to accommodating students with disabilities. Section 3, the facts. Next, we must analyze the facts in regards to the people, the place, and the program. So the people, what we know. Miguel is a sophomore. He was injured playing football. He wants to take biology. Miguel also has a wheelchair. Mr. and Mrs. Hernandez are the parents of Miguel. They met with Miss Guzman to discuss Miguel's return to school, and they're unhappy with his placement being taken out of biology. Miss Guzman, she's the counselor, met with Mr. and Mrs. Hernandez. She switched Miguel's class without consulting them, and I'm assuming she didn't consult me, the principal, either. Mrs. Pontius, that's me, the principal, I was unaware of the issue until Miguel's second day back. Mr. Carey, the Hernandez's family lawyer, um, he informed me we were violating Miguel's rights. So the people, what we need to know. The teachers and staff, specifically the biology teacher, what are his or her thoughts on this situation and Miguel being withdrawn from the class? The rest of the staff, what are their thoughts? The students, has there been another issue or a student denied access to a class? Also, are they supportive of Miguel's new situation um, and his needs? Dr. Harvey, is he aware of the situation? Has this happened in the district before? Miguel and his parents and his attorney, um, I'd like to know if they're willing to further discuss, discuss the issue and develop a plan of action to remedy the situation. Next in the facts, the place, what we know. This all takes place in Nottingham High School, which is part of the Dover School District. It's the only high school. Um, in the district, it's the central hub of activity. It has outstanding academics and, a football, and an outstanding football team, approximately 3,200 students. It's an older building with relocatable trailers. A fourth of it's not up to code um, in regards to accommodating those with disabilities, and this is due to the lack of funding. Specifically within the high school, the biology room is not up to code, um, and it's not accessible for student, for Miguel or other students that have wheelchairs. For the place, what we need to know, the classrooms. Are there any open wheelchair accessible classrooms or any other science classrooms or nearby classrooms that are wheelchair accessible? And then is anyone willing to switch um, without being asked? The building, what's the cost to bring the building up to code? What would the timeline be for this? Do we have the funds? And if not, how can we get the funds? The program, what we know, Nottingham High School is a public high school. It has exceptional academic programs. The biology class, specifically within that high school, is not accessible to Miguel. It's needed for the university he wants to attend. It was replaced with another science class. It meets graduation requirements, but not the university's requirements. So the program, what we need to know. Um, awareness, was I the principal aware of the schedule change before um, it was brought to my attention by Miguel's mother. A 504, has one been created or is it in the process yet for Miguel? And then in the future, does Miguel want this course right now? Or does he want to wait until the room is ready? What are his thoughts? And what other accommodations will be needed? Section 4, Review and Prioritize. The situation and its outcome could be extremely damaging for many people, the school, and the community. First of all, Miguel, he was denied access to a class due to his disability and it's affecting his college choices. Mr. and Mrs. Hernandez, their son is not receiving a FAPE. Nottingham High School has a bad reputation, or it could get a bad reputation, um, and it could be damaging to the culture and climate of the school. The principal myself could be damaged. Um, I need to investigate further, but there's the possibility of a lawsuit and my and the school's reputation. Ms. Guzman, it's damaging to her reputation and her credibility. Dr. Harvey, is he aware of this issue? It could be damaging to the district. The staff, um, they don't want to have this tarnished look on their building, but also it might kind of be a burden to them because they may need to switch classrooms. The students, um, it could be damaging to them as they're trying to support their friends. And then also the community and its viewpoint of our school may change. Section five, my options. After discussing the, discussing the situation with key stakeholders, the following are options to remedy the issue. The first would be take no action, support Ms. Guzman's decision. Um, Miguel is still on track for graduation. Next would be to move the biology classroom, discuss the move with the teacher, uh, move the room immediately so Miguel could resume coursework immediately. 
construction, I could leave the classes as it is, but begin construction so the class could be taken before graduation pending um, the construction timeline. Also, Miguel could be switched to an online course or a distance education course. Section 6, Evaluation. Now we must weigh the pros and cons to determine the best option for Miguel. So for step one, take no action. The pros would be I support Ms. Guzman's decisions and he's still on track for graduation. The cons is I upset the Hernandez family. Um, it's unlawful and it could potentially be a lawsuit. Next, um, could be to move the biology classroom. The pros, Miguel can take the course. I would be following federal laws. Cons, teachers are having to move rooms in the middle of the school year. It could be confusing for other students as their rooms are getting switched. Um, and then also I'm not supporting Ms. Guzman's decision. The next option was construction. Pros, the school would be up to federal and state codes. The classroom would be accessible. The cons would be it's expensive and it's not an immediate solution. Also, would it even be done in time for Miguel before he graduates? Next is online course. The pro would be Miguel receives biology. The con is he's not with his peers and it's not where he was initially. That would be the same for distance education. He would receive biology, um, but he wouldn't be with his peers and also the cost of a distance course. Section 7, the best option. After analyzing the situation, it is best for Miguel to remain in his biology course. So I will move the biology classroom. I must advocate for equitable access to educational resources and opportunities that support the educational success and well-being of each student. Therefore, it is best to move the biology classroom to an accessible room to ensure Miguel has an equal learning opportunity. I need to meet with the teachers involved, um, explain the situation, and offer assistance in the move. I need to meet with Ms. Guzman and explain the possible le legal repercussions of her decision. I need to ensure that Mr. Harvey supports this decision. I need to meet with the Hernandez family, Mr. Carey, Dr. Harvey, um, and all stakeholders to discuss the changes. And I also need to write a 504 plan for Miguel and plan on updating the rest of the building. Section 8, Implementing My Plan. A comprehensive understanding of the situation must be used in order to ensure the equitable use of educational resources and opportunities. So steps to success. Step one, um, in the meeting with Mr. Hernandez and Ms. Carey, as it's coming to an end, ask them for some time to investigate the situation um, so that I can get a better understanding. I then need to meet with Ms. Guzman to find clarification and understanding of the situation from her side um, to kind of see what happened, what her thought process was, um, and also let her know that I need to be aware of switches like this. Step three would be to meet with Dr. Harvey, the biology teacher, Ms. Guzman, and any other affected um, staff to brainstorm solutions to present to the Hernandez family. We need to come up with a plan. And then we also need to have a backup plan, um, which I would say would be the online course. A school attorney may need to attend. I will leave that up to Dr. Harvey. Step four, meet with the Hernandez family, Mr. Carey and Dr. Harvey, to present the plan and ask for their input. Make the adjustments as needed. And then also start the 504 process um, and discuss the timeline that we're working with. Next would be arrange a time and method of moving the biology room. Um, we will probably need to move more than just the biology teacher, um, offer them support in this move, and let them know it's appreciated. Step six would be have Ms. Guzman change Miguel's schedule back to his initial schedule. Step seven, inform the staff of the situation. Specifically, um, our specifics are not necessary, probably, um, just generally what's happening and to make sure we're all in, a com all in compliance. Step eight would be to start the process with Dr. Harvey um, of updating the rest of the building to ensure it's accessible so we can avoid this in the future. And then step nine, which is extremely important, I need to monitor the progress of this situation and stay in contact with all key stakeholders to ensure um, that all needs are being met. All of my standards that are embedded throughout are highlighted in yellow.